You know, June is a special month for me. And last month, June 2021, was extra special, and here's why. When I was a junior in college, I met a blonde at a fraternity party. Now, I hadn't intended to go to the party since I didn't have a date that night, and I was immersed in a pretty serious poker game being held at our dorm that evening. But the game broke up pretty early, and my roommate and fraternity brother, name a snake, and I moseyed down to the party to be sociable. Well, one of the brothers there was from Laurel, Mississippi, and he had brought a co-ed from there to the party. Now, he introduced me to her, and the only way to express my reaction to that introduction is that a sort of a chemical reaction boiled up. Now, you ladies probably probably won't be able to identify with the reaction, but most of you gentlemen might. From the moment of that introduction, I could get within 30 feet of that girl and my neck would swell all up and I'd want to start snorting and bellowing and look for about an acre of dirt to paw up. <laughs> I started trying to get a date with her, but she was booked for weeks and she was dating a very large football player. My tried and true fraternity brothers advised me that, well, there were many fish in the sea and perhaps the, perhaps I should pick, pick one out, the wing of which would pose less of a threat to my bodily safety. But testosterone often trumps good judgment and I persisted. Finally, finally, she had an open date on a Sunday night and I suggested that we go to a movie. Now, that was about the only choice we had in Oxford, Mississippi, at a movie on Sunday night. She agreed, but she sang in the choir of the Episcopal Church and needed to go to church before the movie. There comes a car through Shaco. Man, there been a bunch of them today for some reason. Well, I told her that I'd pick her up after church, let out, and we could go to the movie. She said, well, why don't you just go to church with me? Well, now, I had too much time invested by now to risk a cancellation, so that became the plan. Now, I had never even seen the inside of an Episcopal church. Now, I'd heard that the Episcopal service included a prayer book and required a lot of standing and sitting and kneeling that I wasn't familiar with, and I didn't want to seem totally ignorant so after we reached the church and she departed to the choir room to put on her robe, I sort of hung back until they processed down the aisle and I followed the procession with a plan. Now I looked for an empty pew so nobody would be sitting beside me observing my ignorance. And by the time I reached the empty pew I'd seen about halfway down, the choir was in place and the service was beginning. Now, there is a devilish device in the Episcopal Church called a kneeling rail. At the end of any service, the courteous folks pushed the kneeling rail up under the pew in front of them so it'd be out of the way. Well, the folks who had vacated the pew before me, this particular pew, that I chose evidently weren't courteous. I swung into that pew like the old Baptist that I was, tripped over that kneeling rail and pitched headlong into the pew in front of me with sufficient force that I knocked the pew over. <laughs> well, the pew was heavy enough so that I couldn't pick it back up and several of the men had to come and help me pick the pew up and put it back in place. The service stopped, and the blonde observed the whole show from the choir loft. So that was so much for impressing her. But God works in strange and mysterious ways. She, for some reason known only to her, decided, I guess, to take me on as a project. And she is now 
the grandmother of my grandchildren. And this past June, we spent the weekend of the 26th in Laurel and attended the Episcopal Church where we were married 60 years ago. I was 24 years old when we married, so you can do the math. And she still affects me the same way she did at the start. But at this age, maybe mm, a half acre of dirt probably would suffice. <laughs> Oh, by the way, you all who saw my little video last week about our country divided may want to tune in next week when I add another thought or two on that subject. Meanwhile, I'm Jim Ritchie, and I'll see you then.